All right, and we are back. So this right here is a grab bag uh, that is sold on eBay. And you can get grab bags from different dealers, and they are all kind of have the same idea. So I wanted to go through um, a few little videos and, and do uh, some projects for these kind of somewhat standard sizes. And if, if you're a beginning wood carver, and generally I think our generation of wood carvers, you just don't have this... Uh, you know, basement full of tools and bandsaws. A lot of the uh, projects that you see out there are going to be out of reach for you. So you have to kind of get wood that's cut into these kind of sizes and then uh, design projects around them. So um, we're going to go over one today. It's just a very simple one. I went over it a little bit in the Lucky Clover's carving series, whatever that's called, um, where I just kind of did a spiral. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a spiral. We're going to turn it into like a full project, um, kind of make it all nice and shiny like. Uh, but we're not just going to do the spiral. We're going to we're going to make a hollow spiral, okay? Which is going to be. Um, and by the way, what I'm sketching here is just kind of some random ideas for what could be put on these uh, sizes of wood. And if you guys don't get this kit specifically, um, <clears throat> are you just getting other pieces? You know, find stuff that's similar, and then just you know do find some designs or whatever. And you can do it on your computer. You can you know put it make it the ratio of uh, whatever the size wood you actually have and um, you know just just go after it you know a lot of a lot of carving especially in the early uh, stages is just you taking a 2d design putting it onto a piece of wood and outlining that design and then rounding it out and you would be amazed at the you know what you get just from doing that so this is what we're doing right here is we're gonna we're gonna make a top and a bottom so it's not just a spiral and I'm kind of doing some weird measurement things in here, just to be, basically break it into thirds is all I'm doing. Uh, basically, I'm going to have a little top there, a little base in the top, and then I'm going to have the spiral going uh, from each to the other. And I didn't measure this out, as you can see. I mean, thirds, you don't really do anyway. But it's basically what I'm doing here is I'm making diagonal, saying, okay, this is about how much diagonal I want. Every time I do one of these little swirly sticks, um, what did I call them earlier? Spirals? Whatever. Um, I never measure it out. I just kind of start with a, an angle and see where it takes me. And so what we're going to do here, by the way, what I was just marking off is uh, we know we're going to turn it into a bit of a cylinder first, at least the part that's not the top and bottom. And you can do this project with a dowel if you want. It's a cylinder-shaped piece of wood. And you just basically you know do a top and bottom if you wanted to and just leave those the same you can maybe bring in the rest of it a little more uh, but the shape itself will probably mark it out if you just want to mark um, you know draw a little top and bottom for it have a base these if we do a hollow one like what we're gonna do it does need a top and bottom or else they're gonna be um, the I guess the cables or the cords what we could call them the pieces of the spiral they'll just fall apart eventually so if you're just doing a regular spiral you don't want to make it hollow um, you don't need a top and bottom, but in this case you do. This is a bit of a Whittler's puzzle, and we'll get into those a little more in a little bit, but this is kind of what we're looking for in the end here. This is kind of the design. So you have to do less carving if you go straight from uh, a dowel, and that's another way to get wood from a craft store that uh, is generally kind of carvable. Some of it's a little bit hard, but it's usually pretty good. So we just start here by making some stop cuts at the top and bottom and then uh, kind of rounding out. I don't do it all the way because uh, I know I'm going to make mistakes and I'm not going to be able to carve a perfect, you know, uh, cylinder anyway. So I just kind of get some of the wood out of there. So, okay, okay, so I actually did a few voiceovers for this and then I started making a, an illustration for you guys for, for like how I space these out so you guys could maybe do this exact one with this exact piece of wood. What ended up happening is because after I make this uh, a cylinder is I just kind of made those lines and kind of went with them and again like I say I never really measure these things out and I guess I thought I was going to have two kind of cables uh, again you'll see what I mean in the end there um, you know two, two swirling kind of rods going around each other and that's what I've done in the past, like on some love spoons and whatnot. If you don't know what a love spoon is, go check it out. Um, it's a fun project to, to kind of uh, the umbrella of a lot of other projects. Uh, it's basically a very decorative little spoon. Okay. So anyway, so I've done that for a few love spoons, and it'll be these this hollow spiral stick. And um, 
it's actually it's actually really hard because it's it's there's not very much wood and it's very easy to break and there's nothing in the middle to hold all of it up. So this one turned out to be three cables basically, and um, I had no idea until I was drawing it out. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, it's 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 a good example of this project, kind of what it is, is that you know you can you start with a very basic idea and you just stick to it and you end up with a very complex and nice looking thing. You know, you just kind of are doing stop cuts at an angle. And you keep going, turning this thing around, and doing those stop cuts, and, and making the spiral, and then, you know, if you basically just keep uh, rounding that out until they're complete cables on their own. Even if you don't do that, you know, if you do a spiral, um, which also looks very nice. Again, it's just a stop cut at an angle that you just keep, you know, keep following. It goes all the way around, and basically, so I made this thing that's like almost impossible to recreate, and I have no idea how to measure it out, so. I mean, if this, these, they'll have like the two lines on them that we're carving, which I guess is three cables. So that's really what happened. I don't know, actually. I have no idea how I ended up with three, but it it did work. So if I guess if you wanted to follow that, you would you would look kind of kind of at the top uh, as a cylinder, kind of draw a circle out. Or if you did, you know, you started with a uh, a dowel, you could kind of cut it into thirds, and you say, okay, I'm coming. You know, I'm going to start a, a stop cut here here and here okay so to, to make this you kind of have to have instead of doing the one stop cut spiral you need to have one on the other side as well that turns it into two and then if you break it into thirds you make three stop cuts that are all angled and go follow down then that's what makes what we're going to do here again i really wouldn't think about it or try to uh you know measure it out too much um i would just kind of go for it and it, it's Again, it just it always makes a nice product, and if you don't, it doesn't look like there's enough um, size or space for the knife or the wood or whatever you know uh, is happening relatively that it can't work. Then just kind of carve it to its fullest, and then you know make it clean and and just kind of round everything out as much as you can, and it'll still make a really nice project. And then basically, you know, you do a few of these, and you start to get an idea for and a feel for what's going to make what what kind of angle on what size of a cylinder and how many of those lines are going to kind of give you what outcome. And a lot of them that I did when I wouldn't measure them, they were like longer ones, they would start out really uh, steep and then they'd get more and more, the angle would increase more and more. So those you can't actually make hollow because they get, become too, um, well, I don't know, maybe you could actually. I, basically where the hollow, you can't hollow these out when there's not enough room for the knife to get inside there or your tools to get inside there so that's going to depend on your tools going to depend on the wood you know how much you're willing to dig in there and, and chip out your knife um, and we'll get into that a little bit later when you start seeing me separate these so I would kind of think about this project being in the two that you can have it um, you can have a spiral stick and you can have a hollow spiral and then there's kind of breaks off into these branches of how many uh, rods you have in your spiral okay if it's going to be two, three rods or cables, whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure. This stuff kind of looks like rope to me. It's what it reminds me of. But I don't know what you would call like the, it would be strands. What's a bunch of strands? Never mind, anyway. Uh, so you can see here, I'm just kind of like going after these like kind of lines that I drew. Just doing stop cuts, getting them all in there. And you want to get them kind of all in there from top to bottom <clears throat> before you lose your lines. If you want to stick to those. Again, I rarely draw lines in the first place, so... I really just did it on this one because we have a short, you know, space here, and I wanted the top and bottom to kind of look somewhat similar. You'll see in the end actually that um, are not even pretty soon that, that one of the cables is much thinner one than one of the others, which isn't is really a problem as long as um, you you stay with a, a piece of wood and you keep kind of cleaning it up, not overworking it to the point that it falls apart, but. Um, just kind of rounding it and then if you go to sandpaper smooth it out you can see here this is basically the whole project we're, pretty, we're basically done at this point point. and the hollowing out is going to be a little more complicated but this is why it's a great project especially early on um, it'll it goes into so many different types of carving and uh, the practice and it's just something that you can do and not really think about and still end up with a piece um, instead of just kind of practicing stop cuts, you're you're actually making something that uh, will look cool afterwards. And you'll see these in uh, architecture, uh, running throughout all of all of human history, art history. 
um, on frames. They'll kind of do half ones. And then uh, if you're watching these old shows about the Renaissance or whatever, you'll see them. Um, guys, they'll use really huge ones for um, for bed posts, which is really cool. And sometimes they'll get really, really large. And it's just, again, it's a it's very basic uh, but strong design. So you can see here I'm using a um, upswept knife at this point especially because I'm being a little bit rough you can use uh, your straight uh, straight blade on this one of course yeah again the how basically you know to make it hollow or however deep you're gonna make these lines it's gonna depend on your knife and how thin you're able to make the cables you'll see kinda on this one like I'm basically pushing the limit of you know how far at least for my own patience I guess that's another um, Something else you can add into that equation is your patience and your ability to sit there and dig out wood. Um, I called this a whittler's puzzle earlier. It's just something that, um, hold on, let me drink my beer. A very small group of projects that can consume entire careers of wood carvers and whittlers. There's uh, probably, the most two famous are the ball and cage and then the the chain links okay and you can go look these up on YouTube and you'll see these old guys who do nothing but these and uh, just sit around and do them all the time and that's it's really what whittling and, and wood carving is all about and I guess you know I'm kinda of more on the whittling side kinda of more on the craft side craft I said craft okay <clears throat> the craft side of wood carving uh, wood carving does go into woodworking and it goes into fine art and all this other stuff and I really kind of like the mindlessness uh, and the kind of zen of having these more simple projects um, even for like the faces for me certainly in the beginning there's that you know there, you, you'll be caught up too much in making that it work but now a lot of times when I pick up a piece of wood I'll just start working on a face so it depends you know maybe some of these projects like this one you'll overthink it on the first few but you know within after seeing one turn out um, they'll start getting more and more easy to just turn out and, and just relax you. So that's not what wood carving and whittling is for all people, again, but um, it's it's can take up, you know, again, <clears throat> be a lot of quality time with yourself uh, or with buddies when you, when you do this kind of stuff. And so this kind of goes in there because... Uh, that when you make this hollow, basically, it becomes a Whittler's puzzle because in the Whittler's puzzles, <clears throat> is that how you say them? Whittler's puzzles? Whatever. Um, oh, there's also the pliers, by the way, which are really hard. You kind of have to use an exacto knife to make them. I guess it depends on the size, but uh, there's like a few others. Yeah, but all these kind of came actually out of they come out of like either from prisoner of war camps or um from hobo life in america which was like kind of around the train era when i think our grandparents i'm not going to say our i don't know how everybody old, how old everybody is out there uh around in the 50s or 60s these is getting these are like the animators uh the guys who are like making disney and stuff these guys were huge into trains and a lot of these guys were big wood carvers and whittlers after their generation, you see more of what we run into in wood carving, where these complex projects and stuff. So before them, these Disney guys, the 50s and 60s, these guys grew up when kind of the last free place in America was the trains. Okay, and there was um, you have to kind of imagine life being a lot different. There, there wasn't as many people on Earth. All right, so there, and there wasn't this not just how many people, but there wasn't this feeling of anonymity. I say that right? Um, so anyway, but basically there was hobos. It's a funny word, it really is. And you know, there's like a whole class of hobo carving and hobo whittling and art, which is super funny. But it basically wasn't the same thing. Hobos weren't like homeless people, or if they were, it wasn't the same same uh, connotations or ideas attached to it as it, as they are now. I'm starting to speed this up because all we're doing is the same thing over and over again. I'm, you're just going to be watching me do stop cuts for six hours and you don't need to do that. I mean, you're going to watch it anyway, but it's going to be faster. Uh, and by the way, I mean, uh, you guys see what's going on here? We're just we're just developing that spiral. And this is what I mean by, by spending time on it. Um, I just keep working it. Get it more and more around. And then, 
you know, go back in and say, what what else can I do? Can I can I make these even deeper? You can see I've gotten over to a straight blade. And the straight blade kind of depends on how much curvature there is in your thing, if it can get in there without getting chipped. You'll feel that when you're working on this project, once you get deeper, um, the limits of your, your tools. Anyway, so back to these hobo guys. These guys, there was this last kind of era of freedom where these guys would go from town to town, they'd ride on the trains, and they just kind of have this free life where they would go and you know maybe make a living off little magic tricks or sometimes just selling these little like whittling projects they would do and maybe teach them to kids um, or you know they really they just would basically hop trains and ride around and this was like it was kind of I guess the, like the last like maybe cowboys you know or or I, I just don't know what else to how to explain it um, but these guys I, I've seen in old movies that these guys aren't always like bad people they're like would spread information around or there was a certain there was like a period before it was sketchy to have a stranger play with your kid you know like that's this is how we're you know our imagination is going to have to take in to account here how long ago this was as far as what society's turned into since then so it's pretty fun to look back on this stuff and um anyway all these guys these like i, and I keep bringing up the disney animators right these guys in like the 50s and 60s um who, who were kind of a, basically adults by then. And these guys all had train sets down in their basements. And that was kind of part of the lifestyle. And uh, anyway, the Disney animators, were all, the, most of those guys were huge uh, wood carving fans. Again, it was mostly like whittling, very simple stuff. And one of those guys, um, there was actually seven guys who were called the Seven Dwarves, who were the main guys who made uh, Dumbo and Cinderella and all the classics back then. And um, one of them made um, most of the installations in the... The American Museum for Wood Carving. So, but you you probably know of like this kind of archetype of these guys back then that would have these train sets in their basement, and that's like basically you know that was what that was kind of part of that, that symbolized that kind of freedom that they saw in that lifestyle in these hobos. So these whittlers, um, they'd take basic stuff, they whatever they could, small stuff, and make these kind of fun things and. Um, Kind of, I guess, what in general, when you look at them, they kind of have an optical illusion about them, um, and you'll get a reaction with these that you don't get out of out of people with other stuff. No matter how much talent or work you put into it, it's just not going to entertain people the same way as a ball and cage does, or you know, a, a chain. And this this hollow spiral kind of gives that same reaction from people um, that when they look at it, it doesn't seem possible, like it shouldn't happen. Um, and generally, most of those, all of those, what they have in common is that you have to do carving on the inside of something. <laughs> so whether it's the ball and cage or it's the chain links, you have to carve on the inside. I, I just said that, but um, you don't ever carve on the inside of stuff. It's weird when you think about it. We're always carving on the outside of it. You know, when you, when you carve a face or head, it's always the outside, everything. So on these, we're having a space that's on the inside that we have to get to somehow. <clears throat> so this is where the angle of these things and how thick your little cables are um, and also how, how big your knife is. Not just in the size of it, but the shape, how far back it goes, how thin of a tip it has, where how that can get into all these little the insides of this. Um, is it's not just carving the inside, but it's also it becomes very complicated to model the the way that the wood grain is going at any given time inside your head, um, and that gets particularly hard um, on the inside of this thing. So the spiral doesn't help that either, by the way. <clears throat> so a lot a lot of times you'll be using sandpaper, but you really don't have to. Again, if you just have some patience, I kind of go after this thing like I do most projects at a video. Um, pretty aggressively without a lot of patience but um, you know it's relative but that's generally not what these projects are about they're about just kind of enjoying yourself and that's whatever speed you know you have but when you think about whittling <clears throat> you know out on the uh, the porch uh, with the dog and the sunset and your rocking chair is the kind of project you're going to be working on Okay, so um, you'll see me draw here um, 
kind of a little bit more of like kind of what you can think about is happening three dimensionally. Um, really, because you know, again, we just do this kind of angled cut, and then make it deeper and deeper, and then we hollow out the middle. Okay, so it's basically these kind of chords, and then what's happening in the middle is this is basically a cylinder that we are removing. Okay, so you can see right here, especially like there's this these chords going around the cylinder and that's what's getting removed because most of it is just doing these kind of uh, diagonals and the chords making them deeper and deeper but at a certain point <clears throat> we're removing that inner part and that is kind of supposed to be a bit of a cylinder on its own in the middle there so you can see me here, I'm doing a bit of decoration on there, and I skipped through a lot of the recording of uh, the different decorations I do. I kind of was like messing around through a lot of them, but um, what you saw there was just like, you know, it's just kind of basic kind of V-cuts. Uh, basic chip carving. I'll do a little bit more towards the end there. It's really kind of unnecessary, but um, chip carving is uh, it's a very specific, like design-oriented thing. Uh, but it's it's really good to learn because it kind of it really drives home um, how you take out like a piece of wood. And how you'll take out the details when you when you do like you know basically stop cuts um, or not just stop cuts but like what you saw me do there when I did a little square where it's like t removing wood that isn't just you know with the middle of the blade you're know, using the edge um, it helps you kind of think about more. Uh, what you need to do to make that happen. Basically, it's just, you know, you're making two angled cuts and they meet at the same depth. And this, you know, it's basically making this sort of V cut. And I say V cut because it is a V, but we're reproducing what the the V tools make when they're in their cut or a parting tool, the gouges. And. So you can see there, a lot of this is just kind of at this point, just kind of digging out. Um, and specifically right there, I'm really getting like the holes through, getting through to the other side. Um, and be careful with your, with your knives. You don't want to push them too hard. And you just kind of take your time and whittle through there. But if you have a thick enough knife, you can kind of do a little bit of a drilling. And you want to... You can go kind of toward, towards the middle, but then at some point you're going to look at the other side and be like, okay, where is this supposed to be aiming? Because you don't want to drill a hole straight through uh, into one of your cords. You saw there I was twisting it. You can kind of start to see where you can start to see the hollow parts. Once you get that first kind of hole all the way through, everything gets like easier after that. You can start opening up things. Um, Yeah, you can see that you start to see it. And you just kind of take your time. And again, the uh, once that starts to open, you'll be doing the inside of these, these kind of cables. And that gets really tricky. Um, not just kind of imagining what the grain is doing, but getting your tool in there and then getting a... a a nice cut to happen. Yeah, so that's where sandpaper can really help a lot. But again, if you're just taking your time, you'll be okay. This video was taking a while, uh, and one of the reasons is not only because I'm moving for the second time in like two months, but uh, my laptop is like dying. The fan is making all kinds of horrible noises. It's like freaking me out. But. 
Hopefully that'll get fixed soon. If not, I'll just use another computer. But like after you get started on one, you just gotta keep going. Oh my god, okay, so this thing's like done now. You see I just kinda kept going. And this thing's like you can see all the way through there. But again, it's just like oh okay, so what I'm trying to draw here is that when you're doing the inside of these, you get to this you'll tend to have like these kind of points where it's basically when the, the grain changes direction and your knife will be kind of digging in and making a v-cut and really you either need to line up your little sweeps so that you're going with the grain on from each direction or what happens a lot more is you just use sandpaper and fix it so basically just don't get too frustrated with it but you'll feel your knife start to make those little it'll start to dig in there and yeah don't let don't let the knives uh, make too many shapes there yeah this uh, this three chord thing even though it's like so hard to replicate it's worked out so great because it's like the first one that hasn't broken they've had to like glue back together but it breaks it's no problem anyway so here we go I'm gonna show a little bit of sanding stuff so okay so folding regular sandpaper you see what happens there you see those white spots that's what happens is the, the sandpaper basically disappears where there's a crack so what you do is you put a little bit of duct tape on the back or you just use sandpaper that is um, I forget what to call it it's, it's basically, you know, fabric-backed sandpaper. Um, but if you put some duct tape on the back, it does the same thing. And you can fold it, and it's much, le much less likely to uh, kind of fold in half. And it will make a very tight U-shape instead of cracking in the middle. And then you can also kind of roll it around stuff, whatever's thin. In this case, it's a very small jewelry file. Can I use that? Stick it in there, and because it's twisted, you need to keep rolling it in that specific direction so that it'll keep working. Um, and then you can also, usually, it's stiff enough with the duct tape that you don't even need anything. You just kind of stick it in there and go after it. And you can also kind of do this thing right here, where you just kind of stick it in there and just start like pulling on it. I think it's called like strip sanding, something like that. When you're, I don't know where that term comes from. There's something similar to this, but yeah, you just kind of do this deal, and you probably need to do that even if you take some time with your knife. Um, you know, take some sandpaper and go through there and clean it up some. At least for your first few. Definitely spend some time with some sandpaper before you get things too thin, um, or else you'll just you just end up uh, overworking stuff. So here, okay, here I'm gonna do a little bit of chip carving. Um, kind of show you. Yeah, I kind of do a little like um, this is an X design, but uh, a little bit I guess I don't like a British flag kind of thing. Um, what happens with the chip carving is instead of just doing the V cuts, you're doing these like triangles for the most part. Okay, there's there there are other cuts, but most of it's like these triangles that are like this. It's like an upside down pyramid. And you basically kind of just stick each one in at a four to five degree angle and um They make certain knives to do this, but whatever knife you're using, you try to imagine that you're not letting your cuts go deeper than what this shape is um, because you kind of back all these shapes up against each other and then it makes it look like extremely detailed and has this very nice geometric effect now you do need to watch how you know deep you cut or else you're going to be cutting off huge chunks or pieces will fall off but um, when you back these triangles, these little kind of upside down pyramids up against each other, they make this beautiful, like kind of very detailed effect. Um, and it looks very fine, but of course, because they're 45 degree angles, 
um, they're actually this there's, there's no like uh, fragile parts to them or there shouldn't be at least so um, you can see there that's kind of like the first one and again you kind of do it's like with any stop cuts or V cuts you do a very small one and then you go larger um, and that's easier you can see there it kind of kind of gets that shape that I was trying to draw out there and it goes in that what kind of drawing that I did um, I forget the guy's name hmm. the guy is like great at chip carving but if you just look up chip carving in general um, you'll see they have like these very complex patterns that they draw out um, and they just kind of do very basic shapes and they just uh, make this incredible designs uh, but again it's all kind of based off of this um, so it's fun to kind of play around with on a, a smaller basis then I'm trying to draw like a you know what chip carving knives are I'm not sure what happened there so basically we're done here and you get kind of like a toothbrush towards the end a clean toothbrush and it will help you pull out like the extra chunks but also like if you you know your hands are going to be all over this there's going to be oil there's also going to be like the pencil and if you need to you can put a little bit of um, soap hand soap or light soap and wash that off or whatever you don't want to soak the piece in water and soap but you can get quite a bit on there and just kind of scrub it and we'll still get off there but a lot of like loose pieces that are like maybe barely hanging on will come off with the toothbrush and kind of clean up. There, yes, uh, I scrubbed the bottom, so that's good to go now. But yeah, once you start to sand stuff um, in like these round places, you really have to just keep going until there's not any. Um, flat spots left like you really have to keep you know it's, it's kind of one or the other we're not putting like a huge shiny urethane on this but um, I don't know this is kind of how it goes like you kind of have to have you know either carved with planes in these like, flat spots or you have to go all around so uh, that's basically it right there, and I didn't show you all of the the kind of designs that I did all around the world, top and bottom. But that's basically it right there, and we just mess around with this little spiral thing and have fun with that. Again, there'll be a little illustration to help you out with some of these uh, different designs, but just kind of mess around with it and have fun. If it breaks, glue it back together. You know, um, this is another option right here. You have a small plane, um, you know, if you can't clean off all the stuff, um, or it's just not flat for whatever reason, you just plane it off, get, a, get all that, uh, the dirt and the pencil off. And the plane, of course, didn't work, so I have to go back to the knife. I'm just going to do that. This becomes a, a very um, tricky game, of course, because... Um, you know, you take it down a little bit, and then you have to go back up. It's, it's a, it becomes a game of milk and cereal, if you're aware of this game. But uh, there I have a little box. I should have just edited this out. Whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it's kind of like mostly understood the whole spiral thing. It seems like really complicated, but again, as I keep saying with the spiral stuff, like you just, you kind of set with an angle, you know, you maybe make a few of them and you just kind of follow it and you just make it deeper and deeper. And, you know, on the first few, don't make it hollow, just kind of make it, you know, nice spiral and spend some time on it. And it'll look like just super awesome. And if you do like a top and bottom, even without that, um, you'll end up with like a very nice cool looking piece um, again it's something that's very simple in the carving but can look extremely complex and um, like, a, like a nice finished piece 
without having to work on it too much or have any complex ideas or plans. I think I'm trying to sand it off now since that didn't work too well. Um, I think in the end I use a little bit of uh, boiled linseed oil. Is that right? No, I think I use tongue oil. And this is a nice uh, finish that will give it like, especially with basswood, it'll give it like a dark look. So it's like kind of wet looking and without it like being something on top. So polyurethane and shellac give like a shiny top coat. And then there's like tongue oil and all these other kind of different oils that will um, seal it and still keep it kind of wet looking, quote unquote. Um, without leaving something on top and then this kind of the other levels of stuff where there's wax or um, you know using just like a an oil that doesn't dry um, like a walnut oil or something and those are going to just go too deep they're not going to stay on top at all so it's kind of different layer layers of how much is on top and basswood specifically because it's so porous and, and white, um, you kind of want something in between. And so that, uh, that tongue oil finish, which is not really tongue oil, um, works pretty well for this stuff. And you might need to double, double the coat. So you see here, I'm still just kind of trying to get a little finish on there. Getting in there with the sandpaper. And... I don't know. I'll definitely try this. It's like it's so satisfying to do this little spiral. Like um, I've been doing it since like very early. Again, this is kind of like some of my first real wood carving. Was just doing a simple spiral, and just kind of keep messing around with it and the sizes, um, and then eventually go for a hollow one. And the triple, you know, I have this three chord thing that I just didn't really mean to do. But that helps to keep it stable because um, otherwise like basswood or certain sizes they're just not going to work uh, doing trying to do a hollow piece but I don't know at the same time when I use harder woods I start to rely on them too much and I end up breaking them so anyway hope you guys enjoyed and I'll try to get out some more videos soon for you and uh Contact me if you need anything at all. Love to talk to you guys about anything. Look there, I'm brushing the teeth on it. Okay, and that's it. I put my initials, I did a star. The star was kind of the same as the uh, the chip carving. Um, same kind of design. Just some little squares. There's my little chip carving for whatever joint. And that's kind of it. And then here, I'll show you some a few little like pictures of it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, we're going to do the finishing on it. By the way, these knives that I used, um, they're from Deep Woods Ventures. And hopefully they will... The model should be on his site by the time this video is out. Here you can see the tongue oil finish. And again, um, tongue oil finish is kind of... Uh, I don't know, ironic joke because it's not really tongue oil. Um, it's more of like a medium polyurethane shellac thing. So then you can see like the first piece, like a, a piece that it came from and the finished piece. And it's not pretty good. And it's just really simple stuff. And I hope you guys don't like it too caught up in the magic um, because you just you just do this and people are going to be like so blown away with it even if you don't make it hollow like people are freaking they love the spirals there's the light there so you can see through it so yeah again I try to do a um, bit of an illustration if you guys want to try to draw it on there for uh, uh, for the measurements. Here's my little slow motion video there. Alright. Carve safe, guys.